Hey guys. I'm Jerry. I'm Sierra. We're ladies. And we tangent. I've never heard of this. The this actual crime. thing. So it's. But it's centered around a bigger thing. Something that I do know. Everybody's heard of it. <gasps> this is about Chuck E. Cheese making pizzas out of other people's pizzas, isn't it? <laughs> no, but that would be such a good true crime. <laughs> That's a thing, I think. They make the conspiracy. There was a out con- of people? No, not out of people. <laughs> it was like cannibalistic pizza? <laughs> Rat parties? <laughs> yeah, then children casinos. No, they would take the leftover pizza oh, yeah, from yeah, pizzas yeah, and yeah, put, yeah. It put it together. Yeah. When I first heard about that, I was Sprinkle like... Sprinkle some more cheese on it. <laughs> you know, where's that? <laughs> like, did they touch it? You know what? If it goes in the <laughs> oven, I'll give a fuck. I know. I Probably in my head, I'm like, it's just like leftovers. But then yeah. I realize like it's other, other people's, people's <laughs> leftovers. But like if you put it in the oven, it kills the germs, right? That's how science works in I my think head. So, sure. I think. What's, What's up, up, everyone? everyone? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Raise your hand if you cried today. Hey, you raising your hand in your car. And- we both mark a pull at each other crying. Yes. Was like, <laughs> you were emotional. And I was like, get it together, Sierra. And as soon as I hit the thing, I was like, so. <laughs> well, like, I think I was emotional over something that was stupid because I'm feeling overwhelmed about something else. It's almost like I can't I cry you, about you the real that. thing. It's my Grey's Anatomy thing yes. where I have to watch like a, sh- a sad show. <laughs> A sad show or yeah. like listen to a really sad song mm-hmm. or something and get it I out. I think in the Fangin's uh, page, some they've got like a playlist going, like a Sad Bitch <laughs> Island playlist. Uh, it, it's incredible. I'm gonna you guys are great get... in there. Yeah, if you're not on there, ladies and Fangin's on Facebook, answer all the motherfucking <laughs> I know, guys. You're really making it hard for me. I don't want to deny you, but... Now, There was a person (laughs) who answered the questions. Okay, if you guys send, like, we forget a lot of our quotes. So some of the quotes (laughs) that you guys send in, see our screenshots to show me because Mm -hmm. they're so fucking funny. (laughs) But some person got invited by their friend. Yeah. (laughs) And their responses were like, I don't even fucking know who these people are. (laughs) It was like, what's your favorite LMT quote? I don't know what that is. Yeah, like I'm not even. I don't even really. To me, she seemed like I don't even want to fucking be. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow, okay. Courtney invited me, and I'll honestly fuck Courtney. Yeah, <laughs> like, we were like, come on in. Yeah, you know what? You're you, invited. You seem like a great time. I'll be honest, I denied her. <laughs> well, yeah, because, because we're well, there for a s- specific. Re- like, I'm all for people inviting their friends to be like, look at how uplifting mm-hmm. this group is. But also. There's a lot of things that are talked about about the podcast. Yeah. So, like, if you don't listen, I feel like you're not going to understand well, that, anything. And it's also, like, we're trying to create a safe space. Yeah. So, just letting people willy... It would be, to me, like, having someone walk into the middle of, like, an AA meeting and thinking it was not <laughs> an AA... It, like, the, yeah. it was a retirement party. And they're I like, just so, why the is the donuts and the fucking vibes? Coffee? Yeah. <laughs> like, what? What's up? I like to hear good things about myself and tell yeah. my stories. And it's yeah. like, maybe not the place, though. That's not what this is for. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like... People are sharing vulnerable things in there sometimes. or We want to keep you safe. Yeah, we want to make sure that we're not just... Because people have gotten in before that we're, like, just trolls. So. Yeah. Total buttholes. <laughs> Big old buttholes. <laughs> we're not trying to deal with it. I'm having a baby. <laughs> Honestly, and I'm just over Will. <laughs> no, it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot going on right now. Mm-hmm. Right now we're in October. Even when though we're not. Out? Oh, we are in October right now. Yeah, this comes out in October, I think. <gasps> yeah, but I mean. F- oh, like, we are. Really? Yeah, today October is the first, first day of October. Yeah. <gasps> Yay. It's baby month. Oh, I could cry right now. I'm just <sighs> thinking about it. I know that last bit. <laughs> Ugh. People don't. Uh, we already did a pregnancy update, so you guys have already heard it. But like people don't talk about the last like three, four weeks mm-hmm. that as much as they should, because yep. it is the fucking worst. Yep. And the fact that some women, like, don't go on maternity leave until, like, when I, I worked up till three days before I had Noah mm-hmm. as a waitress. And I, yep. now, I mean, my body's 10 years older, but I was like, how did I do that? Yeah. I don't know. I remember <laughs> I was teaching, obviously, before mm-hmm. I had Ollie. Um, and I was still shooting, not a ton, because obviously COVID. Right. But I was still shooting before Forrest. Um, but... With Ollie, Shane was in the Christmas production at church. Like he was playing the drums. So 
I went to practice with him. Oh yeah. And at the time where they, the practice space was like on the top floor of mm-hmm. this like industrial building and they did have an elevator, but some people were like, Oh my gosh, it takes forever for that thing to come up and down. Cause it was like an industrial That's, outdoor elevator. Scare the fuck yeah, out of me. It was like big time, like bars and chains. Yeah. And, anyway. Um, so he goes, we'll just take the stairs. And I looked at him and I go, you're the dumbest boy in school. <laughs> And he was Are like, you oh. kidding me? It was like four flights of stairs. No. And he looked at me and he's like, I'm sorry. And I'm like, no, we're taking these stairs. But at that point, I was really trying to get Ollie out anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm so I was like stomping up these stairs. Yep. No, are you happy? I can't freaking breathe, but I hope that you're happy we chose the stairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you asshole. <laughs> That's the thing, too. If I was closer to like 39, 40 weeks, I'd just start doing some things like that. And it would make me feel like I'm mm-hmm. getting somewhere. I don't want to do anything like that right. because I'm not there yet. Right. But also I'm close enough that like it could happen. You're over it and they won't stop it, but it's not the time. It's not no. wise for you to induce it on your own. So I don't want to. Yeah. But also. It's probably not wise for you to ever induce it on your own. No. We probably shouldn't say that. No. Yeah. Don't induce it. I definitely own. didn't do everything that they say on the internet to <laughs> get my children out. You didn't do like castor oil or anything. No. Like I that, refuse right? to do that. Yeah. That's that's like things like that I feel are more dangerous yeah. than. Like, if you have sex, it's just like, they tell you to do that. Yeah. Oh, my God. But I, I cried. I don't want to. <laughs> like, I don't want I to. I cried. <laughs> I, I literally laid on my side and was like, just do it. <laughs> and he's like, I don't, this is not fun. And I'm like, but I, but I, I need it. None of my life is fun right now. No. Okay. So I need, I need you to just take one for the team right now. <laughs> this is something that it's, let's think of it as a medical procedure. <laughs> yes. I love you. I wish be. that we could be lovely. We will be so intimate. fun yeah. as soon as we get this kid out. Yeah. But right now, just turn the music up louder so you don't hear my <laughs> tears. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't even tried that yet. No. Oh. Nothing. No spicy foods. Nothing. Because th- spicy foods just give me fucking heartburn. Well, with Forrest, <laughs> I tried everything and yeah. nothing worked. Like I was literally well, riding with, around on a lawnmower. Same with Noah. And then I relaxed for like two days and my water broke that mm. night. And I was like, oh, what? Yeah, nothing. Yeah. So they they truly will just come when they want to. And I don't like that because I feel like you're in control. I know. <laughs> and like, give me a little bit of control. Yeah, all of it. <laughs> All of it is out of your control, and that's it's frustrating. It's so frustrating. That's one of the most frustrating things about being pregnant is like you. I remember in the beginning when you were scared. I mean, you're still scared about random things, but right. you're still scared about a miscarriage. Mm-hmm. And like, what if I do this, or what if I mm-hmm. eat this, or what? If- oh yeah, I didn't want to drink any tea. Yep, because I was like, I don't know what's in oh, it. Oh yeah, uh huh. Yeah, and I told you like, whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. You can't. Yep. You can't prevent it if yeah. if there is a genetic right. m- malfunction. <laughs> That's uh, not the word I wanted. Genetic D- mutation. mutation. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Yeah. So like, because that's what like so m- many miscarriages are. Yeah. Correct. And mm-hmm. I was gonna throw out a statistic, and I was like, "Don't fucking do that. You don't actually know what it is." Oh. Uh, but I know that it's a it's a large. It percent. is a lot. Yeah. The majority of the time, if it's lost before a certain time period, it is because there was something Some kind genetically of chromosomal, yeah, yeah. abnormality. That's abnormality. what I was looking for. Oh. We got yeah. we got there. It we took did. us a minute. How many of you were screaming at us? I know. It's People probably. say that all the time. They're like, can we call in? And I'm like, no, no. because we do this really far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, at least now we do. Yeah. I That's gonna be nice too. I just wanna get on a on a like this is fine and yeah. it's necessary, but I can't wait till life is back to normal for both of us. And we I think I'm like, feeling the effects of the amount of work that we've had yes. to do because we were used to doing this once a week. Yes. And now we're sometimes recording four episodes in a week. Yes. And I know it's gonna pay off at the end of the month when we have like a lot going on mm-hmm. and I have all my weddings and you have a human <laughs> yeah, a new but child. it's tough yeah it's tough because we set an expectation for ourselves for what we deliver to people and I feel like I saw you two days ago so how do I have anything <laughs> new to say to you you know well, except that we're just talking about crying and being in pain well, again. well that's the thing is like I I set this expectation for myself, for us to perform. And like, I've been thinking about the last episode that we recorded thinking like I fucked it up or that I didn't do a good enough job or that I didn't bring the funny I don't even remember. 
It was the pregnancy update. Oh, okay. No, oh. it wasn't. No, it wasn't. No, it was the wedding one. Yes. We recorded a wedding traditions one. I don't yeah. think it's come out yet, but that's coming. Surprise. <laughs> and, it's, and it's great. It's such a Please good one. Please tell us it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we call your so mom in it. <laughs> we do call my mom because she called. She was like, how fun was that? <laughs> <laughs> she did? Yeah. How cute. So if you want to hear Elaine on the pod. <laughs> Keep listening to us. Don't yeah. decide at this episode that you're turning us <laughs> off forever. Yeah, please give us that'll just validate all the negative thoughts in my head. (laughs) But also, like, I'm anticipating I have so much anxiety about the month of October. All of my brides, if you guys are listening, I feel great. Don't worry at all. I have it under control. I think it by the time this airs, we're almost halfway through August, or we are like close to the end. So, well, but my I know one of my brides who's listens, and she hers is the last one of the month. Jess, I'm gonna do great for you. I promise. No, it's gonna be fine. We will. Take a shot of tequila to celebrate. But (laughs) it's like I am so panicked wanting to make sure that I have all my gear prepped Mm -hmm. for two days in a row for this week and two weeks from now. I have two double two sets of double headers. Woof. And and then I have it goes a double header, a single, a double header, a single. Plus I have other shoots in there. Plus next weekend we have to do three of these. Yes. I know. I know. And I'm still editing the podcast. Like I, Ugh, I, that made me just almost start crying for you. I know. And like physically I'm so exhausted. And yeah. I know that after I shoot for eight hours and I'm on my feet and I'm carrying around 30 pounds mm-hmm. of gear that like I'm depleted. I feel like I'm hung over the day after a wedding. That's like a, a thing that photographers say. It's called a wedding hangover. You're in so much pain. You're, yep. you're so sick. And I have to just get up and do it again. Yeah. We used to have double hangovers as a server. And yeah. it's ser- servers know what I'm talking about. Especially if you do two doubles on a weekend back to back. Oh, boy. You're fucking... Everything hurts. Yes. Because you're up on mm-hmm. your feet constantly. Moving, yeah. moving, 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 moving. And go, like, go, 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 I don't go. have help with my kids during the week. So <sighs> I have all of my editing to do for photography, editing for the podcast. We have meetings for the podcast. Yeah. We have ads that we need to record. Mm-hmm. Like we have so, so much. much going on. And I remember how I told Barbara that I like to push that bitch and I just She's go. She's truly pushing it. <laughs> well, that I told Shane today, I go, I feel like I've pushed it so far past E that because I took yesterday to relax and I mm-hmm. took like a portion of today to relax that I didn't even like get back to empty. I'm still below E. Yeah. And I still have nothing, even though I rested. Yeah. I pushed it too far. I should have listened. (laughs) Okay. I made a mistake. Don't you wish, I remember you saying this when your children were both very small, but you were like, I just wish I could like fast forward time through until they sleep. That's how I feel now with this month. Yes. Which is sad because October is always my favorite month. No. And that's the thing too is like. I don't want to wish away time, but like. I really, (laughs) I'm really excited for all these weddings. I really love all these couples. I'm really excited for all of the great things we have going on behind the scenes. Yes. But like, it's also a lot. And I just know that every time there's been like a moment of like a season of a lot in my life, I reflect on it and I'm like, damn, I'm proud of me. Yeah. Damn, I did that. Yeah. We did that. But in Getting that moment, that? <laughs> yeah, 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 is rough, Very rough difficult. business. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Now let's get sad. <laughs> okay. No, I'm just kidding. Sadder? <laughs> um, I don't think we're going to get too sad. I tried to make it not... Because of how emotional and like everything that's been going on with us, I kind of wanted to give you guys a funsy one. A funsy true crime? It's this a is a tangents fun. in true crime. Yeah. You know that from the title, but <laughs> I'm saying it in here as well. So do you put on it what it's going to be or is this going to be a surprise for everybody? We could do a surprise. Just a I normally I crime. normally say what it yeah, is and in then tangents in true crime, but we could... We could make it something. We could name it whatever we want. I want to see if you can guess it. I tried to do I it. do know this? Well, I mean, it's not, it's, it, there's a big thing of it. Okay. So it's. You're not great at hints. No, we I'm could not. never go on a game show together. <laughs> okay. It has to do with Halloween. Has to do with Halloween? Spoopy season. <laughs> okay. Okay. There is a, and it has to do with an urban legend. Okay. Surrounding Halloween time. Okay. What's an urban legend that we hear all the time that we've heard <laughs> as children? Um, um, hollow. Something hollow. Oh, Sleepy, ho- no, Sleepy that Hollow would be with, fun. with the no head guy. No, Ichabod Crane? Yeah. No. Fuck, we brought him up in the last one. That's why I thought <laughs> he would bring it up and say that I knew it. 
Okay, this so has not to that do one? with a tradition the children do. Trick or treating? There you go. Okay. Now, there's something we've heard as kids that is an urban legend that has been drilled into our mind. Don't eat candy. That's because? Because there's stuff in it. Because there's poison. <laughs> yeah. So I did the actual true stories of poisoning or people tampering with Halloween candy. <laughs> Ew. Okay. Yeah. Because there was like, if it's homemade, like if it's, if yeah. it's like, you have to make sure it's sealed candy because if it's like the twisty wrappers, yep. like don't eat it, don't eat it. And it's most of it is an urban legend because people will like inject it with stuff yep. or they'll put pills in it. in it. They'll give you drugs. Yeah. Kids. They're going to give you their marijuana, <laughs> which did happen one oh, time no. on accident. <laughs> what? It was just on accident. Who? I won't tell that. I don't have it written down, but I do know there was a man in California who worked in a post office and he got like a, he found a bag in the post office. They were like mailing candy sh- Snickers. Okay. And it got lost in the mail. And the guy was like, you can just take this, give it to charity or whatever. And then I was like, I'm going to take it home and hand it out for Halloween candy. Well, inside the Snickers, if you opened it, were little buds of <laughs> weed. Oh, my so God. Somebody who was trying to get away with mailing that. <gasps> and then he got in trouble because people opened it and there was fucking weed in it. Oh, my gosh. First of all. But it wasn't. He didn't mean to. That's impressive. I know. Second of all, you don't know what the fuck a Snickers feels like? Yeah. (laughs) That's what I was thinking. And also, the willpower that he took the bag and didn't eat one of the Snickers. Yeah. I would have busted into those. I call bullshit on his story. Your Honor, (laughs) the defense rests. This guy knew. (laughs) But also, why would you give away your weed? At least sell it. To the teenagers that are trick or treating. <laughs> Maybe that was a sample, and he was like, "You know hey. where to come. <laughs> you come back here. I won't tell you how to smoke it. So <laughs> you have to Google. That. Use the wrapper <laughs> <laughs> or a pop can. Yeah. Water mm. bottle. You've done a water bottle. Mm-hmm. I've done a pop can. <laughs> I've done a water bottle. Apple cores. You've done an apple core. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah. We got creative. Yeah. I think a watermelon too one time. Watermelon? It was delicious. Wow. Highly no. recommend. <laughs> I'm kidding, kids. kids. Unless it's legal where you're at. Oh yeah. Hmm. No. It was always it was a water bottle one time. That's like a bong though, right? Yeah. yeah and oh, then yeah, otherwise it was just like, you know, glassware. Yeah. <laughs> things that are made for it yeah tobacco pipes uh-huh. as they say oh you go to a store and they're like these are just glassware pipes and it's like <laughs> everyone knows what that's for mm-hmm. why don't we just call it what it is yeah. here buster so okay we're gonna do poison candy myths urban legends um that are around like hiding needles poisons mm-hmm. razor blades broken glass um so there have been no cases ever of strangers killing or permanently injuring children this way, at least I, being proven. Do you? Do they talk about like why this rumor got started? Yes. Okay, cool. Okay, okay. So I'm, I'm always jumping ahead. I'm just no. like, what the fuck's happening? Why are we just spreading these lies? Yeah. Well, this is blasphemy. Is it because the parents want the candy? Give me that candy. Oh. I gotta test it out. <laughs> well, here's what happened. It's the media. So never listen to the media. No, I'm just kidding. I got in trouble for saying that before. <laughs> um, no, what happened was basically... Do your own research. <laughs> yeah, if you would just do your own research because the fake news media is trying <laughs> to poison your kids. <laughs> Candy. But here's what is happening, which is a lot like... Well, I don't know, like the vaccine, but yeah. it's a lot of causation and correlation. Uh-huh. So like accidents or things were happening where people would die after Halloween and oh. they'd be like, must be poisoning. So they would immediately <laughs> like we're in medieval times. <laughs> I'll give you examples. I have them because um, some of them were like with drugs and stuff. So they would find it in, and they'd be like. A lot of the times it was parents covering for accidents <gasps> or family members. And they would be like, oh, it must have been from the Halloween candy. Um, then the news would pick that up. And then when Let it came out, the actual story, 
it was not as sensationalized. Yeah. So either the news didn't sell it or people didn't give a fuck to like yeah. learn what really happened. Yep. And so they At just that point they just moved on. They just ran with the original story that they heard, which was a stranger mm-hmm. put heroin in your candy, yeah. your kid's candy or whatever the fuck. Yeah. So that's that happens all the time. Like um, I would say Gen X boomer people. Mm-hmm. Sorry if you're here. Sorry. But a lot of times, and maybe you have friends who do this, or maybe it's you, I don't know, <laughs> where you'll come at someone with a hot goss kind of story where you're like, definitely for sure, this is factual. I saw it on my news feed. And people are like, actually, no, this is what's up. And they're like, mm, fucking nope, I'm sticking with this one. Yeah, and I, I refuse to listen to what actually might have been because that's yeah. the problem too is people would be like, well, actually, here's the real story. And they're like, Here's more information. You, but no. <laughs> Here's more accurate information. Mm-hmm. You're right. This is kind of like the vaccine. I, that's Here's what I'm saying. more accurate information. This is updated mm-hmm. information. But after hearing it, you still choose to be like, that one doesn't sound as spicy rolling off my tongue. <laughs> yeah. And I'd like to continue just sharing these memes that say the complete opposite. So thank <laughs> yeah. you. It's like that, but it's been proven. And you're like, hmm, we'll see. That's your opinion. <laughs> it's like, no, but it has. <laughs> Yeah, it's the fucking thing. Um, all right, so let's go. We'll do the history. So it, th- this has been a thing since like the Industrial Revolution time. Holy shit! What is that guy's name from The Big Lebowski? Uh, the dude. What? If, what if I just Photoshop him here <laughs> the entirety of the episode? I think that'd be pretty awesome. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it's been present. Since, Since the industrial the, revolution, so like a lot of doctors would claim that they were treating children that <laughs> you know, go ahead, click back <laughs> that were poisoned by candy, and they were treating these children every single day after Halloween. So they were thinking like, if a child became ill and then had eaten the candy, the candy was assumed to be the cause. Co- or the could have been a peanut allergy. <laughs> Literally, that could have been allergies. Could have yeah. been just that it was the industrial revolution, and you guys were making children like inhale smoke all the time yeah. and work, yeah, or whatever the fuck. <laughs> also, like disease was happening a lot. Yeah, like childhood death was not as uncommon, right? Because back then. of you know. I'm not having vaccines for this. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but here I'll, we are. I'll say it. But no cases of illnesses or deaths were ever substantiated to be like actually pinned to it. However, again, it become became sensational, so people took it and ran with it. Um, here are some actual things. Candy related things. Well, here are some things that happened that like fueled the fire. Got it. So in 1959, a California dentist, William Shine, gave candy-coated laxative pills to trick-or-treaters. Oh, my God. Why? Why? He was charged with outrage of public decency and unlawful dispensing of drugs. It doesn't say why the fuck he did this. I guess he's just a dick. <laughs> like, he I'm just shocked to kill people. He I was just... going to say, those are all, that's the only charges he got? Yeah. Like, he gave that shit to children. Yeah. Laxative pills. Wait till this next one. Um, in 1964, this doesn't say her name. I you ever taken a laxative pill? Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. Oh, he, word of warning. Uh, if you guys hey, have you know already. What? They could basically just say the same for Haribo gummies. So like, let's be really? real. Really? Do you remember the Ruski after those? Oh, they like make you shit your pants. Okay. You know what? I did one of those tummy time tea things because I was terribly insecure before my wedding and i wanted to lose a i wanted to lose weight but i am so lazy yeah <laughs> so i was like shortcuts love that for me oh, no. do not do this no. it is not good for you no but i got that tea that was like okay drink this but beware you will shit yourself like do this at night mm. and so i did it and then like midway through the next day still nothing happened <gasps> i was living on the edge of my seat all fucking day <laughs> that waiting. i was just gonna shit myself because i have a history of shitting myself yeah. anyway <laughs> yeah, i was just really playing, playing with, with fire, fire. <laughs> yeah but what i was gonna tell you and i know i've already mentioned this i think in the first pregnancy episode that we did but take the fucking stool softeners. oh i know i know I've already I did started not. taking Metamucil in about at week like 38. I'm going to start stool, stool softeners like every day. If you guys don't know, <laughs> you get hella backed up and like you're not allowed to eat or drink during labor. During labor. Mm-hmm. And so 
I hadn't shit before I went into labor with Ollie. Yep. And so I didn't eat for 12 hours. And then I, so I had like nothing to poop essentially, but then I was dehydrated yep. and I could, Bad I was so combo. sick and they were like, take these stool softeners. And I was like, no, <laughs> I'm you not taking stools. Them? I did. I denied them because I have liquid shits all yeah. the time. You're like, I'm going to be just <laughs> yeah, I'm like, if there's anyone who doesn't need a stool softener. <laughs> it's me. Unless you feel like changing these sheets every five to 10 minutes. So I didn't take them, but I didn't account for how backed up I would yeah. be. And dehydration is going to dry that shit right out i didn't shit for a week (laughs) and so because i had so many stitches i was in so much pain oh my god my crotch is like throbbing (laughs) i was crying so anyone if you are really struggling postpartum your first postpartum poop if you stand (laughs) it comes out so much easier that is the weirdest (laughs) thing in the world and i don't know why (laughs) that's real what i also heard do not push don't push. Let if it you're come standing, out. you don't have to push. It just gravity doesn't work. It right. does. I was leaned over. I was sitting on the <laughs> toilet crying, and then it, I stood up and I felt it move. And I was like, "What if uh-huh. I just stay here?" <laughs> and that's and I shit into my own hand. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that. It was beautiful. Yeah. But I learned my lesson, and I took the stool softeners with Forest. And better. I had no problem. Okay. So. You just took the ones they gave you at the hospital? Uh, yeah, but I continued taking them once I got home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What kind did they give to you? Do, do you I know? think I just had some because I was okay. like, never no, again. No. Fool me once. Shame, Shame on me. On me. <laughs> Fool me twice. I, all, all, all the way shaming me. Oh, literally, I'm the worst. <laughs> no matter what, I'm shaming myself. Yeah, laxatives I didn't have to, I didn't have to take until I got pregnant this time. <laughs> Even with Noah, not a big deal. Yeah. This time? Can't shit for a shit. I gave myself an enema with my tushy earlier because I was like, I feel like I need to poop, but nothing's happening here. Let me just turn this guy all the way up to 10. I'm going to tangent for a minute. Because okay, we're not already. We're so far from where we started. But have you ever heard of the people that do coffee enemas? No, but I'm kind of fascinated. Me too. What's the temperature? That's what I always want to know. Is it hot coffee? Yeah, I would hope it's not hot coffee. I don't think so. But there's was- hot coming out. <laughs> I watched it was like an I uh, like I'm addicted to and these couples, coffee enemas they literally did them like twice a day and everybody was like you're gonna fucking die and they're like no like it's it's so good for us and they showed them like on their sides taking these I mean they blurred it out but like you knew what was happening do you get like a dr- like a, a caffeine yeah. rush like yes. adrenaline from it yeah they were like oh I feel so so much energy <laughs> so I was like I am wide awake you could do crack and it would probably be healthier <laughs> oh my gosh I was just saying so wow yeah that's always been something I've been interested. in. <laughs> a coffee enema? I just want to try it once. I want to know why these people got so addicted to it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, someday when we just like do shit on videos, mm-hmm. it'll be Jerry and Sierra coffee do enemas. coffee enemas. <laughs> uh, I was telling Shane that. today that uh, I really miss chilies. I don't know how we got on the topic of chilies. Okay. And at the same time, I was like, I could really go for it. And he said, cheese dip? <laughs> I said a shit. <laughs> and he goes, same thing. <laughs> a shit? Yeah. I Because if I go to Chili's, I'm guaranteed oh, just a yeah. good pooper. I got loaded nachos with chili today, hoping that that would work. It didn't. So oh. now I'm scared. Also, I don't know if you remember the end of pregnancy, but like every shit is like, is it a baby? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm very scared yeah. that I'm going to just have my child. In the well, toilet. I told you that that's they tell you to poop like you, or poop like you're having a baby. <laughs> push like you're having a poop when you're in labor yeah and i'm like um I don't okay well i'm gonna to. shit on you <laughs> and the baby i hope somebody's got them up if you are are worried about that um i've heard from multiple nurses they don't give a fuck so i heard it's shit. not that common well that and even if you do you won't know that you do well I, they pull the things away but i looked i looked at my nurse and i go you tell me right now that i fucking shit <laughs> Look me in my eyes. Did I poop? <laughs> Did I poop when I gave that birth? <laughs> I gave that birth? <laughs> when I gave that birth, did I also poop? Tell me. Tell me Tell right me now. Right Give it to me straight. <laughs> She's like, you didn't. And I I'm told like, Dave. I was like, even if I do... I want you to fucking lie to me. <laughs> Don't ever tell me that I did. And so then when we went home, he was like, I swear to God, you did it. And I was like, 
Well, now I feel like you're lying. <laughs> I know. Because I told you to. <laughs> so give it to me straight. <laughs> yeah. He said no, but even if I did, they- I just wanted them to yell, like, what did you eat? <laughs> <laughs> I went to IHOP like three hours before oh. I went in. And I ate so much. Mm. I, I hadn't was, really eaten. Oh, I went like oh, no, that's banana all- sandwich. Banana sandwich? Ham, ham sandwich. <laughs> ham and banana sandwich. You never had one? Have you ever had a banana sandwich with no. peanut butter? No. I can't eat peanut butter anymore. It gives me crampies. Where are <laughs> we? <laughs> time we have deviated so far. I'm so sorry. How do we This has been here? a 10 minute tangent. How did we get About here? pooping. And it, it, it started yeah, with laxatives. <laughs> I know. Oh Sorry, my God. everybody. Okay, 1964. A disgruntled Long Island, New York woman. I think her name was Helen, but I <laughs> that sounds about right. I read it and then I lost where I read it. So this is this one doesn't give her name. She gets to be Helen. Sure. <laughs> um, she gave out packages of in. So she was like kind of annoyed at the the children. She thought were too old to be trick or treating. Which also, hey, fucking let people do things. They yeah. could be out. Doing worse things. Doing way worse things. Yeah. Um. So let him fucking have some free candy. You, yeah. You bought it anyways. You fucking. <laughs> she just puts a Bible in their bag. Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, she didn't. She gave them packages that contained items such as steel wool, dog biscuits, and ant buttons, which are what you the things that are like ant poisoning. <laughs> oh my god! But it was clearly labeled. And she said that she did it as like a joke. <laughs> Helen, she was like, you're not very funny. I'm being funny. Look, I'm a funny guy. And she told the kids like, there's a little joke in here for you. <laughs> well, did it have any candy or was it just steel nope, wool, a dog treat and an <laughs> ant button? <laughs> yep. And the packages like said poison on them. So nobody ate them or anything. But still. But you know what? On Halloween, if someone hands me a package that says poison, I'm like, is it? I know. Because that seems very like just festive. Trick <laughs> or treat. <laughs> Oh. Maybe she tried to trick him. Well, nobody thought she was funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And even though no one was injured, she was prosecuted and <gasps> pleaded guilty to endangering children. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so not a funny joke. <laughs> <laughs> the same year, uh, me- there were media reports of lye-filled bubble gum being handed out in Detroit. What is lye? Lye is like what they make soap with. <laughs> Your mommy never loved you. <laughs> She just whispers, like, you're chewing bubble gum. And it's like, hey, guess what? Santa's not real. I was going to say that one. Oh, and if you're listening to this with your children, what are you just doing? Kidding. This is a true crime. What are, you, are you serious? <laughs> Don't put that on us. That's not our fault. <laughs> Um, they thought it was educational. They're like, beware. <laughs> You'll get hit poison. <laughs> We're going to li- let you listen to all these times. These kids almost got fucked up. <laughs> um, and then rat poison was being given out in Philadelphia. But none of these were ever su- substantiated to be actual events. Although I do know in places like Detroit and Philadelphia, maybe back in the 70s and 80s, there would be after Halloween, there would be like set up stations at like police stations where kids could go in and have their bags of candy x-rayed. Oh my goodness. To see if there was like sharp objects in it. Hmm. There was another report of a man, this was in 2000, I think, who put needles into candy bars, but nobody got hurt except for one kid bit into it and it poked him in the gums. Ow, Ow and gross. I know. E. But uh, uh, I don't know where that one went either. <laughs> Could you imagine eating something and being poked and realizing you have a needle in your mouth? Have you ever gotten poked by a fucking chip when you're eating it? It's like, oh, oh my, my God. <laughs> yes. Up, up through your... Bro. Are you for real? <laughs> Can Come you here. figure it out? Come on. Come on. There's literally. He's What's like, that? are you going to give birth? Are you going to give birth right here? Close me. Hey. I'm here. Give her all space. The time. Give her space. Okay. Dogs are doing this a lot to me. They're very well, obsessed with what's happening inside my body. That you got pheromones. Lay down. He's like, don't worry. I'm a doctor. <laughs> Get my gloves. <laughs> no, I'll see He'll right deliver here. it right here. Okay. Dramatic. Um, what the fuck was I saying? 
Oh, good question. Needles, chips in your gums. Chips in your gums. God, tortilla chips in your mm. fucking gums. Mm-hmm. I want to be like, uh, and uh, gone. Yeah. I have or died. if it gets like in your teeth. Oh, and it's stuck there just poking. One time I have a trauma memory <laughs> of, of swallowing a piece of ice that I didn't mean to swallow. Oh. And it got stuck in my throat. Yep. And I just had to like wait till it melted. <laughs> and it was like so sharp and painful. And I was just like, ah, <laughs> to everyone. <laughs> And they're like, are you good? And I'm like, ah. <laughs> Where's that coffee enema for my fucking throat right now? <laughs> so you should have just had some hot soup. <laughs> oh, I should have. You didn't think about that. No. Because you were dying. <laughs> I was. I was panicking. Because I was like a child. <laughs> and everyone around me was like, fucking suck it up. Okay, you're hey, being a little bit dramatic. <laughs> why are you being like this? Hey, you never drunk anything before? <laughs> Who taught you how to drink, stupid? Just freaking... <laughs> You did this. This is <laughs> you clear, made your bed. Clearly your fault. <laughs> oh shit, that's funny. Okay. Um one more. There was an article published in the New York Times in 1970 that claimed that those Halloween goodies that children collect this weekend on their rounds of trick-or-treating may bring them more horror than happiness. And then it provided these specific examples of potential tamperings, none of which ever happened. There were also two cases, um, like Dear Abby-ish, and then Dear, no, Ask Ann Landers. Okay. Who I'm assuming is kind of like a dear, a dear Abby, Abby thing. Yep. Uh, and so in the Ann, La- Ann Landers one, it says, quote, in recent years, there have been reports of people with twisted minds putting razor blades and poison and taffy apples in Halloween candy. <laughs> Where the fuck do you think we are? <laughs> have you ever been given a taffy apple? That's what I'm saying. Who the fuck is given taffy apples? <gasps> okay. What's a taffy apple? I think it's like from the 1920s. <laughs> okay. Hey, kid, you want a taffy apple? Hey, they're putting poison in your taffy apples. What is this, Snow White? <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm going to put taffy apples in your bag. Razor blades in your Snickers. But she said it is no longer safe to let your child eat treats that come from strangers, which is good advice for yeah. every other day. <laughs> yeah. On Halloween, let your fucking kids eat some free candy. Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, yeah. I do think it's weird. I just think too much candy is a bad thing. Yeah. We, That's what I say. <laughs> I just think I don't feel like going house to house. No. We used to go um, I could not tell you to how the nursing excited home. I am that like I'm giving birth around trick or treat time because mm. I'm like, I don't fucking want to go. Mm-hmm. Nope. Um, my vibe. I remember people would be like, we're going to get in the car and drive to the rich neighborhood because they're giving yeah. out king size candy bars. <laughs> I always wanted to be that king size candy bar. I'm like, one of these days, baby, when I'm just raking in the riches, I'm going to be that king, king, size, king size candy, candy bar. bar house. All the kids are so excited about. They spent so much money on king size candy mm-hmm. bars. Mm-hmm. And you know the parents are eating those ones. For sure. I did. Yeah. Anytime Noah gets anything, I'm like, what is that, a Reese's? You know what to do. Hand it over. <laughs> You're not going to like that. No. <laughs> Give that to mommy. That's got poison in it. <laughs> it's got a razor blade for sure. I know that one time when we went trick-or-treating, my mom afterwards, it was like one time in the 90s, but she's mm-hmm. like, I'm going to stay up and go through your candy and check for any holes or anything. And like when I woke up, I was like, oh, so all the good shit is missing. <laughs> hmm. Were those things that needed thrown out, mommy? Elaine. <laughs> Um, and then Dear Abby said, somebody's child will become violently ill or die after eating poison candy or an apple containing a razor blade. Who the fuck is giving out all these apples on Halloween, you psychopaths? I hate. Do you know how expensive fruit is? <laughs> Ridiculous. Hot take. I fucking hate any apple related fall thing other than cider. Oh my God. Apple donuts are fine, but that's because they're donuts. What about pie? But like, you like apple pie? No. We've already talked about I don't you. like pie. Yeah, I agree. Pie Apple's- is soggy cake. <laughs> and you can't <laughs> tell me any different. Oh, I like to make it even soggier because I get it hot and then I put ice cream on it and I'm just like, soggy fucking. So then you melt the ice cream? Onto the so pie. So why don't you just dump milk on it? <laughs> that's what it's going to be in five because seconds. It's a slow melt. <laughs> And I eat quick. <laughs> okay. It's like a race. Sure. <laughs> sure okay. Um, so I agree with you. And I see so all like caramel that apples. Are like, Tell me anyone who enjoys biting into a caramel apple. I used to. Lo- those were my favorite candies. And They're- now I know why my teeth are so fucked up. <laughs> I, uh, that's what you, every time you. This it is hurt. You tell me you eat a caramel apple. This is what I hear. 
<laughs> and it's fucking gross to me. Yeah, I don't even have to see you eat it. I know that's what it sounds like, and I'm upset about it. Oh yeah, it's bad. Or like, what are the teeth. ones? What are the one, candied apples? Oh fuck! Candied are you trying apples. to lose a tooth? Seriously, <laughs> they're hard. They're hard, and they're not good. You like caramel apples? We were just talking about caramel apples. That's where the oh, came I thought from. you meant the green ones with the the suckers. That's a sucker. I'm talking about straight up apples. apples. Oh no, fuck those. Bobbing for apples. <laughs> <laughs> Whose idea was that? Hey, why <laughs> apples? Where the fuck did that are come from? Are they really like buoyant? Why no. Are we doing different well, fruits? they are. They are. But when your face goes down, <laughs> it just sends it to the bottom. So like That's you just plunge funny. it. They're like you could drown. <laughs> <laughs> This That's the trick. <laughs> Get the treat. <laughs> That's the trick. You die. Yeah. Is it because apples are in? Are apples seasonal fruits? Pro oh, well, I think all fruits have a season. <laughs> I know, but like for fall. Yeah, because I feel people like go they like have to be. People go like apple picking. Yeah. Around this time, that's like a fall date ski type thing. Yeah, and and pumpkins are around this time, so I think that's why those are two big flavors of fall. Apples and pumpkins. Mm -hmm. But pumpkins are superior in every way, and I'll die on that hill. Okay. I don't care if it makes me basic. Fuck you. Okay. Let people enjoy it. So things. go eat a pumpkin. I will. Right now. Go bob for pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen these teeth? I could. <laughs> okay. I have one in my shirt right now. But could oh, you she eat me? Could, she's like, fucking talk shit. Get hit. <laughs> could like, you? Actually, I like pumpkins. But you couldn't eat a pumpkin. Could you imagine a candied pumpkin? If I had. <laughs> No, I wouldn't eat a raw pumpkin. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Like pumpkin flavored anything, I am fucking so into. How do you get pumpkin flavored things? I think you have to bake the pumpkins. And then it changes the flavor? Sure. Because I've smelled a pumpkin when I was carving it. And it does not smell like pumpkin Starbucks? flavor. No. no. Or like pumpkin puree. <clears throat> that you make things with there's lots there's hella cinnamon in it i think okay that's, so that's probably what i actually like <laughs> is cinnamon I think, like, like, I think i just like cinnamon <laughs> <laughs> okay. it turns out so pumpkins are gourds Ugh. but they're also berries what they are because they come from a flower and i think botanically <laughs> that's <laughs> that's how they decide but what's a gourd then i don't know gourd <laughs> Squared, gourd, squared. <laughs> Isn't Sorry. there like a an S something? A squared, squash, squash, <laughs> squash, squared, squared. That's where I was going. Squash My brain is, was there, but I didn't know how. Squashes it got there. are gourds, right? Yeah, that's squash, gourd, squared. <laughs> squashes are gourds. Cu no, cucumbers. Zucchinis? Is that a gourd? I don't know. Speaking of zucchinis. Okay. <laughs> you guys remember <laughs> like a couple years ago when everybody was putting those zucchinis and cucumbers behind their cats? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That was some of the best times on the internet. I was like so scared about where you were telling me those zucchinis were going to go. <laughs> behind you cats? You guys fucking put a zucchini up and be behind your cat. <laughs> <laughs> up your kitty? <laughs> You gotta put no. a zucchini in your kitty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, put that on TikTok. They'll ban us <laughs> <laughs> for a week. <laughs> Fucking a. Um, no, you never saw those videos of cu cucumbers. Cats getting scared by cucumbers. <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> it's mean. So I think what it is is they like. Think that <laughs> it's mean. It's hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh till I cry. <laughs> okay. And it is mean. But they would put cucumbers or zucchinis behind cats while they were eating and then when they turn around they like fucking shoot into the air because <laughs> oh, they weren't expecting it's it it's so funny but I don't know if it's like because it looks snake like or oh, what but it's very oh. funny that's why it's sad yeah they said that <laughs> it's kind of mean okay back to Jesus Christ okay, <laughs> okay. back to Jesus Christ <laughs> amen <laughs> and the Lord saith <laughs> Oh my god, Corey's calling me. Well, you know where I'm at. What Answer it. Fucking... Hello? Hey. I am podcasting right now, just so you know. Oh, sorry. That's okay, bye. I love you. Love you okay, bye. So let's talk about some mis misattributed poisoning deaths that 
These, so re- real deaths that happened that they said happened from candy, but they didn't. Yes. So this is like okay. the shit that the media, this is what took off. <laughs> in Sorry. 1970, there was a five-year-old boy named Kevin Tostin from the Detroit area, and he died after finding and eating his uncle's heroin. Oh, that's so sad. The family then attempting to protect the uncle claimed that the drug had been sprinkled on the child's Halloween candy. But later when they investigated and they found out that it was actually his. That would be so tough. I don't think I would cover for my... Me neither. Either sibling or sibling-in-law. Like, I don't even think if it was, like, my husband that I would cover. No. Because, yeah... But again, I, no, sh- I don't know in that situation, but that's, ugh, I don't know. No. Do you watch Shameless? Yes. Well, you- not up, up, not recently, okay. but I have so I was gonna say, seen it. Do you remember that a part that's so- similar to that? No. Happening in there? Well, then I won't tell you. Okay. <laughs> it will move on. <laughs> I think maybe. With the youngest child? Yes. Okay. He in, in Fiona's thing. Yes. And then everybody's mad at her, but they also want to help her because she's part of the family and they yeah, know yeah, it's yeah, an yeah. accident and all that. So things like that, I'm kind of like, oh, but still, but like, yeah, no, 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 don't sorry. have drugs in your house with children. Yeah. drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, did I say that correctly? Okay. In 1978, a two year old boy from Flint, Mi- Michigan named Patrick Wiederhold died after eating Halloween candy. However, toxicology tests found no evidence of poisoning, and his death was determined to be due from natural causes. Oh, which is fucking so sad. So sad. Um, in 1990, so it just happened to be like a coincidence that it was then. That's what most of these are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in 1990, a seven-year-old girl in Santa Monica, California, named Ariel Katz, died while she was trick or treating. Oh my gosh! And like. While it happened, the police shut everything down, shut the neighborhoods down. They were like, trick or treat is over. We're going to investigate. Everybody had to dump their candy and like yeah. turn it in. <clears throat> and her parents were like, no, she has a, a serious medical condition. She had an enlarged heart. Aww. And here she had congenital heart failure. It just so happened that she had it during trick or treating. That's so sad. Very sad. Um. In 2001, a four-year-old girl in Vancouver, British Columbia, died after eating some Halloween candy. There was no evidence of poison candy. She actually was found to have died of a streptococcus infection. Oh, my goodness. I know. But again, it's just like crazy things like that that happened. And everybody was like, oh, my God, that must, must be poison. Be, yeah. And that's what they ran with. And they didn't say 100% that it was. But because people hear one thing. Yeah. And then they commit it to memory like it's a fact. Yeah. Again, something we're seeing a because lot on Facebook. that's like more, um, I don't want to say fun. Because <laughs> that's not no, fun. But it's like but juicy. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more like dramatic. It's the fucking shit with the kids in the cabinets for what Wayfair. Yes. Yes. It's, it's that like. It was proven so obviously not that it happened. Like even the girls <clears throat> who they were saying were in the cabinets, like their names or whatever, yep. came forward and were like, "I'm fucking alive." Like and not I'm here. in a cabinet. Yeah, it's good. And people still to this day will say that like it's a fact. Yeah, which is fucking bonkers to me. But there's one last one. And this is a sad one. So this is going to be our actual true crime. Okay. And it is the story of the Candyman, Ronald Clark O'Brien. I don't like anything about his names (laughs) from his like nickname to his actual name. Yeah. Yeah. You know when they have, I have like an three issue. names that they're like a fucking killer. <laughs> I don't you know trust you. But like I think I had such an issue with Ronald McDonald that if your name is Ronald yeah, and you go him. by Ronald. Yeah. Go by Ron. Ronnie. Donnie. <sighs> anything. <laughs> anything but Ronald. Because uh-huh. I'm at, I immediately you're a clown. Yeah. And I'm scared. <laughs> I don't like it. So Ronald Clark O'Brien lived with his wife. Daneen? Is that her name? I, I thought it said Darlene no <laughs> at first, but it's, uh, it's Day Neen. Hmm, okay. And their two children, Timothy and Elizabeth. They lived in Texas and a middle class suburb of Houston. Um, he was described by a lot of people, but even like a pastor, as a good Christian man and an above average father. And that's sure. how you know that it's 
fucked up. Questionable. <laughs> yeah. Um, he had difficulty holding down jobs. He was employed by 21 different companies over a 10 year period mm. and fired from all of them for negligence say, or fraudulent behavior. Okay, that's the concerning part. Yes. Um, so in the fall of 1974, he was 30 years old. He was on the brink of being fired again. He was working for Texas State Optical and they suspected him of stealing money. So they were like mm -hmm. investigating him. Uh, at this point, he was over a hundred thousand dollars in debt. Yeesh. Yes, and he had defaulted on several bank loans, and his car was on the verge of being repossessed. Um, so he decided to take out life insurance policies on his children. <gasps> no, 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 no. So now we're on October thirty first. It's Halloween night, nineteen seventy four. He's never really shown any interest in going trick-or-treating before, but this year he's, like, super excited. Yeah, kids, come on. We're going to go trick-or-treating. So they go with this man. He's a family friend. His name is Jim Bates and his two children, and they all go out trick-or-treating together. They went to one house, and the children go up to the door. They knock. No response. Um, so they all start to walk away, and he's like, hold on a second. I'm going to stay behind. I'm just going to try again. After a minute or so, he comes back up to the group and he's like, hey, they they were actually home. And look, they gave us these five giant pixie sticks. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Like the real big ones. And so he gives them to each child. So his and the other guy's kids? Yes. And there's four of them. And then when they were home, he has an extra one. And a random trick-or-treater who is like a teenager comes to the door and he fucking gives that kid one. What? Yes. So... Before bed, he tells his children they could each have one piece of candy. Timothy, who's the son, decides that he's going to have the pixie stick. <gasps> and I don't know what the little girl ate, but she didn't eat that one. Okay. So um, he complains that the candy tastes bitter. So the dad gives him some Kool-Aid to help him wash it down. 30 seconds later, he hears him cry. Daddy, daddy, my stomach hurts. Um, he rushes him to the hospital because he's in the bathroom he's convulsing he's vomiting and he's going limp and on the way to the hospital he dies oh the little boy my god yes so when they the medical examiner at the morgue examines him he finds that he has enough potassium cyanide in his system to kill two or three grown men holy shit i know um, police were able to retrieve the other four pixie sticks. All of them had not been eaten, mm. luckily. The, the, Thank God. The teenage boy went home. His mom said he, that she went into his room and he had the candy surrounding his bed. Uh -huh. And he was holding the pixie stick in his hand. He had fallen asleep. He had tried to get it open but couldn't and fell asleep. <gasps> Can you fucking imagine? Oh, my God. I know. So none of the other kids ate it. Um Investigators had the two men retrace their steps from Halloween, but they started to notice that. And, and so this gets out to the media. Yeah. Stranger gave these kids these pixie sticks and they're yeah. whatever. Um, now, O'Brien is giving conflicting details as to which house handed out the poison candy exactly. Because here's the thing. You can't pin it on anybody. Because they're right. like, no, I fucking didn't. I wasn't even home or whatever. Right. So if you just kind of be like, I don't know. I was here, here. You d it's like the ghost boogeyman you can blame yep. it on. But they don't fucking buy that shit. Um, then they start learning about the financial problems. Then they start learning about him fucking taking these life insurance yeah. policies out on his children. Um, and they found a piece of adding machine tape where he had written down the amount of each of his bills and the total came to almost the exact amount he stood to collect from the insurance on his children. Ew. I fucking know. This guy is the biggest piece of shit. Um, as the police dug deeper, they learned that O'Brien had inquired with several chemical companies on where to buy this cyanide and then jokingly asked people how much it would take to kill a person. First of all, red fucking flag. What, yeah. Like, <laughs> if anybody says that, I would be like, mm, I'm going to just give the police a ring just in fucking case. Yeah. Hey, this person's inquiring about some dangerous chemicals. Cyanide and laughing and being like, so how much would this take to kill somebody? Yeah. Woof. 
Um, they found. Like, I don't know what that's for, other than for like I've heard people dying, right? Like because I, yeah, of it, but I like no I don't idea. know what you would use it for. Like, is that something that people would guys naturally if you use need potassium cyanide in your day to day? Let us know. What's that for? I have no idea. Are you googling it? Yeah, I'll Please. Google it because I feel like there are going to be people who are yelling at us. <laughs> Answers. <laughs> they are always are. I oh, know. Now I'm going to be on a list. Oh, yeah, you can't, you can't fucking Google that. How do you spell cyanide? Potassium cyanide is used commercially for fumigation, electroplating, and extracting gold and silver from ores. Why the what? fuck would a, like, <laughs> just a, a regular fucking... civilian need that? Yeah. That's weird. But he did work at that. Pl- I don't know what... It has it. a similar appearance to sugar. That's fucked up. And highly soluble in water. Oh, that's so sad. So um, gross. When police went to his house, they found a pocket knife in his home with the residue of the cyanide oh. on it, suggesting that he cut it open and then resealed it. Mm-hmm. Um, after failing a polygraph test, he was arrested on November 5th, 1974, and charged with Timothy's murder. The district attorney, um, Clyde DeWitt... That makes DeWitt, me so, so sick knowing that that child was yelling for the person... Who, who did, did it? Him. Oh, it may, but at the same time, there's almost a little bit of a comfort in that he didn't know that his dad was an the evil one who person before he died. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I hate that, but I think it's almost more... <clears throat> for his, for the child's for, sake, it's good that he didn't know it was his dad, yeah. but, like, for all of us, like... We're just like, you fucking piece of shit. Absolute sick fuck. Yeah. Ugh. Um, Clyde if you're Dewitt, his wife, like... That's what I'm saying. I, I don't... I can't imagine. I've told you before when we talked about the trauma bonding and everything, like knowing that I was with somebody who did the things he did to me yeah. and like how I had to cope with that, knowing that you married somebody who did that to their own child. I don't know how I, I feel terrible that she, yeah. what she had to go through to potentially try to heal from that. If yeah. she ever fucking could. Right. I can't, I don't know how I would be able to do yeah. it. Um, The former district attorney in the case says, quote, I am not able to imagine a crime more reprehensible than someone killing his own child just for money. Mm. So he gets convicted. Um, And just killing potentially two, three random other kids just for like. Four other, because there was five pixies. Well, three of them weren't his. That's true. Yeah, yeah. So it was just like collateral damage. The reason he wanted to do that was because he was hoping they would all die together. And then it would be like a random, oh my God, it was a random thing that happened. That's why he gave it to that random trick or treater. Yeah. But like, that's so fucked up that you're like, I need the money, but also I need to be able to cover my tracks. So I don't mind that I'm taking out other people. I mean, it's terrible that you're taking out your fucking own. But the fact that you're cool with taking out potentially five children Mm -hmm. for money reasons, Mm -hmm. you're a piece of shit. Yep. Um, On June 3rd, 1975. Texas, did he get the chair? On June 3rd, 1975, after less than an hour of deliberations, um, the Harris County jury convicted O'Brien of murder and sentenced him to the death penalty. After I am not necessarily for the death penalty, neither, but here but I am. I, no, that's what I'm saying. Normally I'm like, uh, but like in cases like this, I'm, I'm like, yeah. yeah, dude. Yeah. Fuck you. Um, after being found guilty, he appealed his case multiple times. He tried to take it twice to the Supreme Court. He did? Yes. And his reasoning was like, no, this was, remember, like, all of these people, we all know that, like, random people, random strangers. So he was, like, maintaining his innocence this entire time. Trying to really be like, what? You know, it could be anybody. It wasn't me, for sure. It was, it. you know, random people. That's what they do. These random sickos with nope. these kids. And it's like, actually, if you knew fucking anything besides what you saw on TV, you would know that that doesn't happen. Right. Um, Let's see. In the end, all appeals were denied and he was executed by lethal injection on March 31st, 1984 at the Texas State Penitentiary in Huntsville. Um, His last words were, what is about to transpire in a few moments is wrong. I would forgive all who would have taken. He's just a fucking piece of shit. I would forgive all who have taken a part in any way of my death. So up until he literally is dying, for him to still be trying to manipulate yeah. and like act like he's not the bad guy, 
in literally the moments before you're about to die mm-hmm. to try to paint yourself as the fucking victim. Yep. Get fucked, you piece of shit. So anyways. <laughs> yeah, I can't even like fathom that. And it yeah. like my brain I've had to like force my brain to be present here with you this entire time because like I know I whenever, wanted to make it fun and then I was like oh there's actually a really sad one I but I have to give the people what they want you know they want yeah, real true crime, crime. So. but whenever we the reason when we tell your guys the scandals mm-hmm. or um any other kind of stories that you send in we oftentimes are like picturing ourselves in the moment mm-hmm. is you and so like it was really hard for me to picture anything in that moment because i'm like i have two children yes i i cannot like that's why we're not going anywhere we're never going anywhere (laughs) halloween's canceled in this house i'm that mom (laughs) if we've learned anything it's that strangers aren't gonna harm your kids your family members (laughs) (laughs) great great perfect love that for me if that's the lesson that we have to learn today Uh, it's that strangers aren't gonna hurt your kids on halloween well, they might. Just watch your kids. Yeah. Keep them home. You know, Halloween is canceled for your kids as well. Honestly, sugar's bad for you. <laughs> yeah. And we should all be really taking that seriously. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, sugar's bad for you. So are apples. Dude, when have they're you ever covered eaten in sugar. too many fucking candy bars and then you just fucking vomit everywhere? I have an issue, like, where I haven't really been eating candy bars. <laughs> is that an issue for <laughs> That's you? an issue for wow. me. Wow. <laughs> I have an issue where I'm eating too many. (laughs) Well, I was at a wedding the other day and there was like a whole dessert table. Like they had ice cream, they had brownies, they had cookies, they had (laughs) just like so many different desserts Uh on there and they had cake. I'm not a big cake fan. We've talked about I know, but they had so many different other options. Okay. Yeah. I'm down for the brownies. And oh, they looked good. They were like cut into triangles, had a little bit of powdered sugar on them. (laughs) But there was a another wedding vendor there, and she was like, I am going to get some of that food. I cannot fucking contain myself. And I'm like, go for it, girl. And she's like, are you not, like, seething at the mouth, like, going for that? And I'm like, I'll get some later. I always say I'll get some later because I feel weird if I'm like, I actually don't I actually want any of don't that. don't like dessert. I'm uh, fucking I weird. I do. <laughs> I do. But, like, at certain times, I, like, want nothing to do with yeah, it. Yeah. No, I understand. So... I'm like that sometimes, but not being pregnant. No, no, I want no, no, no. fucking dessert. For every meal. <laughs> like, I'm just always like, mm, that was good. Now, now something sweet. <laughs> uh, uh, that was me. I had to. Or I was like aggressive. I, yes. I've been wanting ice cream a lot lately. I had some ice cream that had <laughs> cookie dough in it. Mm. <sighs> that's good stuff. Delish. I like just eating raw cookie dough. That's that's I my little right sweet now. treat. No, they make edible raw cookie dough. Oh, my God. I'm I have sorry. some upstairs if you what? want some. You can take it home. It's in a tub. You treat me. <laughs> I do. I got you, girl. I got Thank you. you. Thank you. Um. Anyway, guys, thanks for hanging out for this tangents and true crime. Yeah. It's a little, little treat. A little, a little sad. Little, sad. <laughs> little, little, treat, little absolutely sad. fucking horrible. Yeah. So. so I'm so sorry I had to do that to you, but at least you got a little bit of the urban legendy fun stuff in the beginning. Yeah. So. Um. Okay. That's the that. On Halloween candy poisoning, candy poisoning to <laughs> crime. Yeah, we will uh, see you next week. All right, we're out. Goodbye.